you are looking to just get through that laning phase and you're looking to roam, right? You can yeah. leave Ezreal in the 1v2 very comfortably. Yes, you have to respect the engage, especially post six of Nautilus and Ash. That can be dangerous. But if Perks can be chilling in the 1v2, farming it up against Ash, Bard can be out on the map looking to back up his top laner if he's getting attacked, looking to back up his jungler if they're getting attacked, and even roam somewhere and have Caps alt in. And all of a sudden, there's this extra member showing up here for G2, looking to turn the tides of that fight. And you know what? I like this. I like the fact that they're playing with a safe bottom side for G2 mm -hmm. because we've sung the praises of Cap. Where this game, and that is always going to make it so much trickier to really track his movements and to, to expect him at the right times. All right, we're on the rift. 30 seconds into the game. Doesn't look like we're getting anything cheeky here at the level one from either squad. Keystones popping up on your screen right about now. Everything's par for the course, man. You got Phase Rush on both Graves and the Syndra. We know that both of those champions can go for runes that apply more damage if they want, but we already talked about how Phase Rush is busted. So many champions want to take it just because... <laughs> Haha ha, can't be slowed. Very, very powerful thing to have in your arsenal to escape some ganks as well as facilitate yourself landing more damage Minions through your own plays. Sword. One summoner spellbook in the game is on caps. So we'll have to see what sort of use he's able to find with that as we move forward. Teleports. Once again, we have a, an Ezreal with teleport versus a different AD carry with a combat summoner spell on the other side. So there will be a teleport advantage for G2 as we move into the later stages of the game. Yep, and something you have to remember, you know, kind of similar to how we saw that, that Caitlyn Lux lane, you don't have to match the teleport of the Ezreal if you think that you have the push, right? Because if you can actually reset with the wave at their tower, it doesn't really matter if you don't have TP, you don't lose that much. But if you're going to be on the back foot, then you may need to take that teleport to actually try to match. You don't give up too many minions while that is happening. So on our screen right now, we were looking at the top laners, and I want to just give a quick fun fact about Bin because we talk about how successful he is and how the team likes to play around him. This guy, and I already mentioned how bloody of a region the LPL is and how this region is just known for how aggressively they play League of Legends. Exhaust used at level one down here in the bottom lane by G2. But Bin has the most solo kills of any LPL player. That is not any LPL top laner. That is not... And there's 17 teams. At all. Yeah, there's 17 teams with five people on each team. Quick maths, 85, not counting subs. This dude's number one for solo kills. If you find yourself in an isolated situation, 1v1 against Bin, maybe just walk away because <laughs> the man is exceptional at these situations. Incredibly talented. Engage in the bottom lane from Sword Art. Doesn't exactly find him much of anything. They were still level one, so the follow-up isn't really there, but... You can see here in mid, Angel with the early control over the wave, Caps losing out in a couple of trades there, pretty low HP. Well, expected that Syndra should have the push here early on, so uh, we'll see Caps if he can withstand that. But down on that bottom side, because the exhaust was forced this early, you know, G2 really has got to stay away from any sort of all-in fight because now it's essentially two combat summoners to zero. You know, yes, you can kind of erase the flashes as those are even on both sides. But the exhaust is on cooldown and you have teleport on perks. There's kill and ignite available for, for Hong Kong and Sword Art. So uh, they really don't want to fight pretty much unless you already have them poked already basically to dead. Um, but Wonder handling this very well up on that top side already. And, and Yankos has eyes on SOFM, so this is kind of what you have to do. He's going to have to give up the scuttle because Angel did move up. But there is a potential angle here for SOFM to double scuttle, and I think he's going to go for it as Angel is just moving down, keeping him pushed in. He's even going to use the Q to just taxi down towards that bottom scuttle even faster. Their bottom lane has the push. I already talked about how they don't want to fight, so uh, we'll see if SOFM can grab this early double scuttle here and, and start off looking good but he actually went back to base interesting yeah he chooses to back instead goes ahead grabs that skirmisher saber as well as a control ward so huh. has extra ability to escape trouble now by ward hopping over to that ward yeah. if he finds himself cornered also has the extra dueling potential of the red smite remember the red smite is like a miniature exhaust and ignite put together not as effective as either one but still has a similar effect to both so makes him much deadlier in that 1v1 situation against the Graves. And now you can see the on my way ping. He's saying, all right, now I'm coming to deal with the scuttle crap. Yep. He fires off the vision plant, the Scryer's Bloom there, just to make sure that the Graves isn't hanging around in Pixel Brush or anything. And SOFM gets both crabs really well. And it's so interesting because G2 so clearly expected that he would be doing it that they didn't even go check, right? They're just like, oh, that's gone. We saw him move, you know, from the top side through mid lane down into that bottom side brush. Of course, he's taking that scuttle. So they didn't even go and check. He actually prioritized that earlier skirmish Shaver, just in case he didn't run into anyone, you know, wanted to, to be ready to fight. You can see that Wonder is going very defensive here early on. Double cloth armor, I think it is so intelligent 
at some point in the game, you can expect SOFM to be up here. It's physical damage on Lee Sin, physical damage on that Renekton. Uh, and building defensively and withstanding, I think, is going to be the key to the game. Because you don't need to be the person to make things happen for your squad. Uh, you can just kind of chill and, and wait for Caps to be able to set up for a play. Wait for Bard to be able to roam yep. and try to make things happen there. And Yankos is actually just walking down here. This is not a gank. This is to just get a free push in on the wave. Uh, and this will actually allow Perks to potentially just save his teleport if he does want to. He can TP back if he wants to keep up the pressure, but uh, I think in this case, you just hold the teleport, you walk back to lane, and you have that TP available if you get pressured out later. So nice little bit of jungle pressure there from Yankos, and Caps even getting eyes on where SOFM is. All right, SOFM deciding to counter jungle a little bit. Caps tosses him a couple of cards. SOFM wants to finish stealing this wolf, but the wolf may be his own death sentence. He flashes away, going back to the safety of his team. So trades away a big wolf for a flash. Mm -hmm. And not, not really worth it, but I don't think he expected Bard to be there that fast, right? Probably you know, he's not. saying, all right, Caps is here. Who cares? I'll just ignore him. I'll kill this off. And it's not like Caps has any damage items. He, he bought a Null Magic Mantle, right? So uh, he was able to grab that. and. Let's see if Ooh. he can secure this. Yankos steps up to take the enemy chickens, oh, no. but Yankos, you don't think that a flash is oh. worth a wolf. How about a death for a chicken? First <laughs> blood for Sunni. He didn't even get the whole chicken. He just got one piece, Flowers. <laughs> That's a, this is the worst trade deal in the history oh, of no. trade deals. Well, it's a deal that he ended up striking for himself. Yankos gives over first blood, trying to go even there on the jungle camp, trading back and forth with SOFM. I can see the thought process. He's like, okay, we know that my opponent used both flash and smite steal in my wolf camp. I should be able to steal that chicken camp away. Mm -hmm. But Angel's control over the mid lane just set things up, made it so he could rotate over, pick up that free kill. And now that means Sooning has themselves a 600 gold lead. Things were pretty much dead even right before that, so that is really the only advantage here for this squad, but it's a nice early pickup six minutes in. I mean, giving first blood over to this Syndra, who already is going to have kind of that, that early advantage in that 1v1 against the TF, so you know, th that's not really very fun for Caps. No. You know, you're already being pushed in, and this extra injection of gold uh, may keep that happening longer, but at the end of the day, it is not the end of the world here. You can see the early Bramble Vest now completed for Wonder. You know, got another early base out. Wonder has been handling uh, this 1v1 beautifully, and SOFM has not actually made any trip up there. Uh, things overall, I would say, looking pretty darn good for G2. Uh, they have not fallen prey to any of the pressure that could have potentially come out here from, from Lee Sin, uh, except for a little bit of counter jump. Bottom side 2v2. Again, gonna find some damage here onto Perks, who shoots the Mystic Shot off on the Sword Art of the back end of the fight, makes that go a little bit even around here. Hawk Shot, shot off there over SOM, SOFM's shoulder, but doesn't exactly see Yankos, who is working on this red buff. Nice smite secure there, dodging away from that Sonic Wave. SOFM will not be able to move in and secure that one. Both junglers are level six. Remember, SOFM, no flash on the Lee Sin, so there's no opportunity to make a big play there with the kick. Yanko still has his own flash, didn't get a chance to use it before he died at that chicken camp. But now, Sooning are after the Drake, should secure this one without really any contest here. They didn't even have a smite for that, but now G2 is coming in looking to stop him. Sword Art over the wall trying to stay alive, uses the Blast Cone, gets himself away. Mickey X in hot pursuit, but Sword Art gets away underneath the tier one turret. The disengage from Sooning keeps everybody alive. A lot of summoners forced there by G2 with that TF ultimate being popped, but end of the day, SOFM able to grab the dragon and Sooning gets away. You can see you know, why SOFM is, is such a respected jungler. He is constantly looking to pressure, you know, utilize the advantages that his lanes have created, attacking the wolves, attacking the raptors, taking the dragon, you know, knowing that they were in that winning position. Uh, did get a little bit dicey though, and we can watch this one more time. Looks like probably a scatter of the week, I assume. Yep did interrupt Cap's ultimate. So critical there from Angel to actually prevent Cap from coming over. And that was you know, his first ultimate of that game. A lot of people really do um, put a lot of emphasis on making that first play happen because this is when you have no cooldown reduction. You're at rank one ultimate. It's the longest cooldown. So it feels very impactful sometimes to set the pace of the game. Caps also you know, is going for that more defensive itemization, uh, building towards Aroa, likely some early Merc Treads to survive against this Syndra. So it like has it. no early CDR, and it does mean that uh, you're going to pay a much heftier toll uh, having that interrupt. And I was praising Ben earlier on at the beginning of this game, and Wonder is just doing a great job dealing with him here in this top side. I say shots. as he ends up just getting his butt kicked underneath Esther the turret. Eats two turret shots, but he does have a nice CS lead up here, about a couple waves worth. 
as the Scuttle Crab is spawning in topside river, and Sooning has brought Sword Art to the party. Mickey X also here on the Bard. Dredgeline nearly finds him. Nice use of the magical journey to make sure Mickey X gets away. As Sooning, yeah, they brought the bodies up here, Azale, but hey, the crab's already been secured by Yankos. Mm -hmm. Will be interesting. I think G2 actually have, have an angle to go for this, though, because remember, Perk saved his TP. So he can actually TP up here if they want to try to force, and we'll see if they do go for it. He is going to TP up. They know Huang Feng's on the bottom side, has no sums. He cannot answer this, and the, oh, big side Sword step. Sword Art just barely sidestepping away. Dredge line into the wall, spider manning himself out of this one. As the follow comes through, they're looking to maybe make it a trade. Instead, it's going to be Sword Art going down. Yanko's still going to be kept alive. Nice outplay there, but it's still going to be a one-for-one -one trade with the junglers after the fact. Support plus jungler, traded away for jungler, two for one at the end of the day, and G2 comes out on top. They do, but the question is, how much are you gonna lose on the bottom side? Because they're bleeding out farm now here, and we have to take that in consideration, but Angel now getting caught up, he's in trouble. Now this could be pretty big. Angel goes for the return kill on perks, but will not find it. Angel, what are you doing there, pal? G2 with the punch. Yeah, G2 getting a couple of kills, but, but still, we'll see. Does the second plate go down to Huangfeng? Because all that farm lost on the bottom side, they lost about two waves there, they lost the plate so they do go positive two kills and the rift herald wasn't taken so you know you, you are up those kills but it's trade for gold and experience uh, that went directly into Hong Kong's pockets so ends up being fairly even overall I, I would say g2 come out slightly ahead which is you know worse than you would think given the fact that they won all those fights g2 making sure they strike back here in this game also notice the stacking items now online for both of the g2 carries we got that mana moon stacking up for perks as well as the rod of ages already completed 11 minutes into the game for caps so right about 21 minutes that will be at its maximum stack maximum gold efficiency he is two waves behind angel there in the mid lane but honestly Angel's early successes are now offset by that mistake he had sticking around in the enemy jungle getting caught out there that loss sort of equalizes things a bit better here in the mid lane. And G2 now with their bottom laners up here in this top half of the map, they're going after the Rift Arrow. Yeah, I think this is actually pretty cool lane assignments, right? They, they sent caps down towards the bottom lane and they just left their dual lane mid to try to make sure that they had the extra members up here and they could get the eventual Rift Arrow. But uh, Sooning is roaming up. We'll see if they're here in time. It looks like G2 should just be able to finish and walk away. So I don't think any fight is gonna break out, but you know, really smart lane assignments here uh, from G2. And that is going to net them oh. the Rift Herald. And Mickey's actually the one to grab it, which is very rare, I would say. Do you see the support picking it up? But uh, perhaps just feeling like he was the one least at risk of getting picked off there. Maybe nervous about Sword Art, you know, catching someone with that ultimate. And uh, Bard may have been able to keep safe. Plus, you're a Bard, right? You're going to be one of the supports that roams around the map the most. Usually, you see anywhere. the Herald itself going onto the jungler because he's the one who can apply it to the lane where it's most desirable. But if you have a Bard that's going to be running around the entirety of the map anyway, like we've seen Mickey try to get involved in everything G2 is doing, he does have three out of three kill participation, mm -hmm. so should be still pretty easy for G2 to find the application of that wherever they want it. Looking across the board, we're still waiting to see items come online for first completions across the board for Sooning. You can see that the Blade of the Ruined King is in process of being completed there for Huan Feng. In the mid lane, you've got Angel still sitting on the Lost Chapter, waiting to complete that in the Luden's Echo. And now SOFM and Sword Art are gonna be starting up the second Drake of the game here for Sooning. As the ulti comes out from Cap, it's gonna see what they're doing. It sees what's going on, but Cap pops the ghost. He's getting the hell out of town. Yeah, he, he kind of ha had a, an inkling that maybe Sooning was looking for a play on him. His team doesn't really have any vision on this side of the map. He hasn't seen a lot of the members, so smart defensive ultimate there from Caps. Gets the intel he needs, does back it up. They're dropping Rift Herald on the top side at the same time. Uh, that last plate probably not going to be able to be cracked because there is so much resistances on that. But the turret plates are about to fall in 10 seconds, so G2 should be able to grab that turret for themselves after the fact anyway. Uh, and going to be looking at that first turret of the game. Wonder building very likely towards the, the Black Lever plus Iceborne style of build. Uh, this is very popular in the LPL. You know, it's an efficient, uh, cheap 40% CDR style build. And yeah does feel pretty nice when you complete it. Yeah, plus you're allowed to stack the components if you don't want to just go for a straight completed item instead. Between Iceborne and Black Cleaver, there are three different about 1,000 gold components that all give you 10% CDR, so stacking those up is very easy. And you can see right there, he had the Kindle Gem 
already completed, plus the Sheen to start off, and then now completing the Iceborne means he's at 30. So Volley Bear, very, very deadly when those skills can be going mm -hmm. off so rapidly. Also has the ability to resist the damage of Renekton and Lee Sin together, as you pointed out earlier, by stacking the armor. And hey, if the only AP threat on the enemy team is a Burst Mage that does not want to be wasting her entire damage loadout on the Volley Bear, you're feeling pretty good about just prioritizing armor and then going for your Bruise Rifles. You definitely are, as long as you get some health, right? Because yeah. th that's the one thing. With Bramble Vest and Iceborne, that's a lot of gold for zero health, right? Uh, you are going to get some from the Black Cleaver, but you know, hopefully your, your next item after that would be at least some HP. It doesn't have to be MR, but like Dead Man's even get that Giant's Belt in there uh, to just have enough flat health to survive that Syndra burst. And then I fully agree with you because Syndra doesn't generally want to be expending the ultimate on the Volibear. Uh, it's going to make you too vulnerable you know, in that rest of the fight. And we can see that, you know, with this build also, it's, it's a really cheap two items. So, you know, when Ezreal completes two items, you're going to have two items very quickly after that, uh, potentially here on Wonder. And you're going to have a lot of members on G2 that are ready to go. Whoa, that engage there from SOFM going deep underneath the enemy turret. Ends up having to use his own flash. Now he jumps in for some chickens. It's the kick on the Yankos. Will not be able to stick around and take those chickens. These no chicken camps are incredibly deadly this game. Azale, as SOFM does have to use that to disengage there. I can see maybe what he was thinking underneath the tier one turret. Yeah, we can go in, try to kick the AD carry back. That's Ezreal. He presses E, it doesn't work. Yeah. And that seemed a little bit too hypey from SOFM. They got the tower, right? He's zoning them back. So that's that's the other thing you have to remember is that, yes, it did cost him his flash, but he got Mickey's flash out of it and they killed the tower because Perks was running and the rest of G2 is trying to peel for Perks. So, you know, SOFM definitely plays extremely aggressively. He plays without almost any fear. You know, he shows mid lane, goes to that play and then he's like, yep, I'm just gonna engage and, and follow up right into the chickens, try to steal away some, some jungle camps in your face. He's constantly taxing your resources, forcing you to make correct decisions against him or he will punish you. Because he is playing so bold, but really, he only has the one death. It's not as though he's, he's running it yeah. down this game at all. You, know, you would expect someone uh, playing like this to have died more against G2, who is such a good team at punishing you. The difference between risk and calculated risk and SOFM is making sure that even if these uh, the decisions might look a little crazy, they're not so crazy that they put him in the dirt. Also, look at his inventory. Knight's Val, you mentioned this in yep. Champion Select, how SOFM likes to go for defensive itemization on champions that generally build more offensively. He likes to build Knight's Val on so many different champions. Now in the bottom lane, G2 is coming in for the three-man collapse onto Ben. They're bringing in the teleport to make it a four-man. Ben is just walking away. Perk shoots off a mystic shot. G2 committing a lot to this, but won't get much of anything. And now we'll see if Sooning can find something elsewhere on the map. Mickey X walking through the jungle. That's a bard. You're not really going to catch him out very easily. Sword Art leading the charge as Sooning path through this enemy jungle here. Perks gets found out with the Sonic Wave. Once again, it's an Ezreal. You won't be able to make much of a play onto that. And now Han Fung with the rest of the team feeling perfectly safe here on this Ash can step up and find some auto attacks in the tier two. Yeah, I mean, I think G2 were really committing to that because they wanted to be able to set up around that dragon early. If you got that kill onto Bin, you would be in a good position to do so. But that was flash off caps. You know, that was a lot of ultimates. That was a TP. We'll have to hold that. They're looking for Angel here, but the flash away keeps him in a spot where he's not immediately under threat of death. Now that was Bard ulti. That was Ezreal ulti. That was Twisted Fate ulti. A lot of tools there from G2 trying to make that pick. Of course, they do get flash out of Syndra, which can be very important in the follow-up fight. G2 also in a spot now where they have priority over the bottom side river. However, the crab was just secured by Sooning. Remember, that's very important. That's vision that cannot be cleared away no matter what you do. As SOFM takes a couple of shots of poke over the wall, now retreating back here with the rest of this squad. Huan Feng also almost has the enchanted crystal arrow up and ready yeah. to fire, but the Drake is up now, and G2 seem to just be forcing the issue. Bin is right there in the brush, could be able to Jack engage. His on ultimate, this one. it's almost up, and he has a perfect flying position. There Sword it goes. goes in. There comes your damage. So much gonna be poured down on the G2 lines, and Perks is already out of the fight. Wonder tries to jump back in. It's a one for one trade. Wonder for Sword Art. Now the Drake is the target. Soon in going after this one. Mickey's over the wall. Caps and Yankos both still here. The Drake's gonna reset a little bit. It's still at half HP. Sooning still working on this one. Over the wall comes Yankos. He's in the pit. He's looking to maybe steal this one away. The Drake is going to be taken low. It's secured by Caps! 
You gotta be kidding me. The wild cards over the wall. What in the hell? They trade Yankos for it, but G2 will take the objective and stop Suning from hitting that soul point. That potentially could have just saved G2's game. That wild card steal on the dragon there, because if you put Suning from this winning position at soul point this early in the game, we can see in our axe replay here, they found the angle because G2 had to force. They didn't want to give up the easy soul point, but they were missing a lot of key cooldowns. And the perfect engage right over on the caps. They layer the CC. They knock him down immediately. G2 got slaughtered in that fight, only taking down the enemy support. But it's all about the dragon because they were sticking around and, and Suning did not actually clear G2 out over the wall. They did wait to stop Yankos to prevent any sort of 50-50, but the smite came down. And I didn't even see the health on that. It must have been incredibly low as the wild cards do snag it and prevent Soul Point, which allows G2 to play the map allows them to forego going to a dragon that could be game losing when they are in a tough spot. They have more time to scale now, more time to play the map and try to trade a dragon for a tower with TF and things like this that could be really, really critical in this game because Suning have been in full control, it feels like. Ooh, Sword Art tried to engage there, but the dredge line only finds terrain, and now Sword Art's in a really bad spot. True Shot Barrage nearly finding the kill. Sword Art walking away. Now, last Mystic Shot will not find him. SOFM looking to engage on the top side here as Angel's going to be caught oh, out. Tries to go for the Blast Cone, gets taken down. Shut down, credit over to Caps, and the enemy mid laner is dead. Enemy support, 10% HP. Enemy jungler at half. Baron is the call for G2. Did you see that ward from Mickey? He warded out the Blast. Blast Cone and Angel could not auto attack the Blast Cone to get out of there. Mickey with a huge play. We'll see if SOFM can get in here. He's in trouble. SOFM's gonna There's get no killed bugs. by Perks if he's not careful. He flashes over the wall. Sword Art's gonna engage now. Enchanted Crystal Arrow comes through and Perks is dead. Mickey with the flashback over the wall. Bins in a 1v3 looking to maintain the aggro on the rest of the G2 squad. Volley's coming out. Focus Fire going down. Huan Feng trying to keep G2 away from this objective. Sooning jump in. They stop the G2 Baron attempt and they take perks in the process. What a tense game. These two teams battling back and forth. Really, really close here. We can watch Mickey again as he comes out here looking for the pick. They see Angel over there. They pop the ultimate from TF and they're going forward and catching Angel on the very edge. Sword Art, you know, getting focused down. A great binding from Mickey over the wall, but now track Mickey. Long range, magical journey oh. over the side. Pink ward on the blast cone. I don't think I've seen that in competitive so play. Good. Warding the lantern has become standard. This is the next evolution. Mickey warding out the blast cone, getting the kill on Angel there. Unfortunately for them, they did lose perks and got pushed off the Baron, but still a fantastic play how quick he was with that magical journey and really on your feet thinking to be able to ward that out. Most players, they go in the shop Isaac, and they see a control ward, and they're like, oh, yes, I'll pay 75 gold for vision. <laughs> Mickey X walks into the shop and says, yes, I'll pay 75 gold to kill Syndra outright. 75 for 300, that's a good deal. Yeah, that's a great deal, fantastic deal. I'd take that deal any day of the week, and so would Mickey X. Easy kill into Angel means there's nothing left of him in that situation. Three, two, and one here on the Syndra. Still a good KDA overall. Suning still up a little bit over 1,000 gold. Next Drake spawning here in 90 seconds. Now, this one is still very important. Remember, we're working towards an ocean soul this game. This is one of those souls that can really, really change the course yeah. of a game. And for Suning, you know they don't want to be losing this one again to another wild card, wild steal. <laughs> this would be the opportunity for soul for them if those wild cards didn't steal the last one. We talked about how fortuitous that was for G2. They're happy with that situation, but now can they contest around this one? 60 seconds until that Drake shows up. You can see that the Scuttle Crab will be spawning around the same time down there as well. There's control wards on the side of Suning hanging around in this mid lane and the bottom side of that river. Caps is top side, but he has the TP to get to the bottom half of the map if he needs to be there in an instant. And he actually just popped his ultimate. So this is what I was talking about. I think that, you know, they are willing to, to make these sort of trade plays. G2 is such a strong macro team, really good at playing side lanes. Caps gets out here, actually pops the TF ultimate to track vision. And then has a timed out, so he's actually going to TP back. So pretty expensive wave push, I will say. But now that they know Cinder's up on the top side, they're going to try to move in here and get vision themselves. Angel does have TP to be down, but they have to keep contesting because if you give over Ocean Soul, Suning has a, a lot of beefy boys over on this other team. <laughs> yes, they got sir. some tanks. I mean, this is a full tank Lee Sin. He's going Spirit Visage third. Renekton has a lot of HP, and, and Nautilus is pretty tanky too. And if you can't burst them down, it's guaranteed incredible amounts of value from Ocean Soul. So they must contest. 
Sword Art tries to engage, and once again, the dredge line only finding the terrain. Nice counterattack coming through from G2. Sword Art's nearly killed. He tries to walk himself away, but a nice Bard ult. He finds his way out of Han Fung and the enemy mid laner with Angel in some trouble. It's now Sword Art going to be taken out. Ben looking to find the damage into the back line. Mickey's going to be taken low, and Sooning with a beautiful counterattack. Arrows through the hearts of every single samurai in the fight. G2 tries to fall back. The teleports are coming in. And now can Caps get away? I don't think so. Play your last pathetic card. Double kill for Huan Fung. Four dead for G2. Soul point for Suning. S-O-F-M. Learn this man's name because you are going to be seeing a lot of him. What a kick on the perks. Sword Art was able to survive so long. And with all the resources being spent to try to take down that support, Sooning find the angle to turn around the fight to get in there. This is a full tank Lee Sin up two levels on a Graves, who is normally the one doing that to the Lee Sin. He is farming at such an insane pace, almost 180 CS. And there's no team at on him or anything either. Now this is just insane. So let's watch this one more time. All of these resources being put into this really, really tanky stone plate nautilus he survives for so long then watch sofm here finding the angle gets onto mickey as mickey backs up he gets too close to perks and sofm sees his chance kicking him right through the graves he on the graves finishes him off safeguard back to Huang Feng, who's pushing forward there really good play from sofm and mickey just not tracking the fact that he had that Q on him and was bringing it back into his team gets punished so heavily for it. Oh, we're talking about punish. SOFM nearly getting caught there. Has to flash away as the gold card is in the air to make sure he does not die. The Sooning Jungler, now without the flash, down to 130 HP, needs to go back, shop up, heal up. Almost has that Spirit Visage done too. There you go, seeing that one get completed means he won't take nearly as much damage from the Twisted Fate or the Bard. Mm -hmm. Also gets extra heals, very nice stuff. Sooning still with about a two and a half thousand gold lead. One more Ocean Drake, Isaac, and they get the soul. Very, very big point of contention here. Three and a half minutes from now, G2 enters into the world. And we, we talk about this a lot over the course of different games, but it's always worth bringing up. Risk versus reward. When one team is at three dragons and the other team is not, you yeah. constantly have to fight because the risk is they get one of the biggest rewards in League of Legends. But what is your reward? 4% bonus healing. Uh, doesn't, doesn't feel great. Yep, and if, and if you don't have the setup, it, it's so tough, right? Because Caps wants to be playing the side lane. He wants to be splitting the map, but they have not really gotten anything going in these side lanes. G2 has not been able to create any meaningful pressure, you know, towards these tier two towers to be able to start making Sooning send multiple members to answer. It's always Sooning pushing forward. And I think a large part of it is because of SOFM, who's farming like a beast, who's insanely tanky on this Lee Sin. And as a result, he has so much confidence to go forward and, and make types of plays and types of moves that you wouldn't be able to see Lee Sin's with a more standard build get away with. You know, if this is a lethality Lee Sin or something, forget about it. He can't go for these types of plays, but he knows how much tankier he is than that standard Lee Sin. He can fly into a fight, draw pressure onto himself, create space for Angel and Huang Feng and Bin to get into the back lines and to find angles to really catch out perks. And Sooning have been able to do a great job at picking him off. And I honestly really like that. I really think it's such a good way to approach the situation. Because when you think about competitive play in particular, and what Lee Sin gets noticed for, how Lee Sin wins the game, it's what we just saw in that last team fight. It's finding the kick, it's finding the moment, it's being able to be there for that one big play. It's not the, oh my god, did you see him build three lethality items and then one shot Ash for the 14th time? Look at his gold KDA on OP.GG. That <laughs> never happens in competitive play. That is a Sometimes. meme. <laughs> lethality Lee Sin can succeed in some situations, but mm -hmm. so often in competitive play, it's all about enabling yourself for that one huge moment, that one play mm -hmm. that can turn the fight like we just saw, and SOFM is dialed in and ready to go. Next Drake in just over one minute. Su Ning gets Ocean Soul if they achieve it. However, G2 is keeping this game close in gold. Two and a half thousand separates them between their opponents. They've still got Caps with a 3-1-2 and two score line. Almost has the Rabadon's death cap completed. I'm not sure how close he is to that recipe to go ahead and finalize it. He's going back to base now. Mm -hmm. Might be the completion. Show me a hat. There we go. All right. Two sticks makes a hat. That's League of Legends math. Caps is back onto the map with the TP. 
and G2 will look to contest setup here for the Drake. And Perks has three items as well, right? He's on the death stand, so he is at a very strong point. It's just going to get worse for him, you know, kind of comparing the, the straight up DPS usually of the Ash to that Ezreal from here on out. So uh, they are at a pretty good point of the game. The other thing you have to remember is, is since G2 has no option but to try to contest for this, there's also the option for Sunni to say, all right, well, we're going to try to trade for Baron or we're just going to forgo it and take your towers. Uh, they have more of these options and that's why it's so important for G2 to have the setup to get control of mid lane and that's why they're fighting heavily for this. We'll see if they can secure this dragon for themselves here. It's up in 10 seconds. Bin is already in a flank spot. Has not yet been spotted here. And look at look at this. This, this, this is a big moment here in this game. Cap fires off the ulti, but it's going to be a catch down on the perks. Looking for some of the damage onto him. Nearly able to finish him off. Now they're going to find the kill. It's Yank goes down as Bins dive into the back line. Once again, going to be disrupting multiple people on the side of G2. Dredge line not finding the mark. Sooning is able to find the kill, but they're all down low HP. Juan Fung nearly dead. Flashing out, keeping himself alive. G2 disengaging, oh. still looking to skate the periphery of this fight. The Scuttle Crab is up. The Scuttle Crab is down. Securing that one is guaranteed vision over the Drake pit. G2, they're still in good enough condition to fight. They're going forward. They're able to find the kill. Now down on the Sword Art. Mickey X is going to be taking low SOFM. Looking to jump into the fight. Ben's going to be trading the kill. They're one for one. But now it's Swan Fung in trouble. Perk's going after him. The Ash is down. And G2 responds. But here comes Angel. Can he send Perks to the afterlife? Yes, he will. There you go. See you later. Wonders having to run out of this one and just win things look doom for G2. Angel comes back and facilitates the end of the fight that will provide them the ocean soul. Caps did it once. Can Caps do it again with the wild cards over the wall? He throws them through. They will not find the mark. The dragon is slain. The ocean soul for Suning. Wonder has come back in. He uses the TP to try to interfere on the very back end of things, but it won't find him anything at all. What a close back and forth fight. G2 lost the first member, but they had so much poke damage in this replay. This is the re-engage here. They go in, Bin decides to commit forward. Huang Feng is a little bit behind the play. He was actually life stealing up in mid lane, I do believe. By the time he gets here, it's a nice sidestep on the queue from Perks, but it doesn't matter. They've stacked on top of him. They take him down, but Angel has based the sidestep, keeping home guards up, flashing in, closes the distance on the Perks. That ain't the Angel of Mercy. Taking oh, down sir. the G2 Marksman, getting the motion soul. And now you have these multiple Spirit Visage frontliners, you know, getting so much healing from the Ocean Soul. And you have to wonder, can G2 fight themselves out of this hole? Because the gold is very close, yeah. but it's going to be so hard to punch through all of that extra healing. And I, and I love that Perks immediately goes back to base, buys the Executioners. That is, that is a must-have in this spot. Very important to make sure you're making that adaptation when your opponents get the Ocean Soul. Yeah, there's a Bramble Vest on Wonder, but remember the Bramble Vest also depends on him being auto-attacked to apply the Grievous Wounds. So it's not really going to do anything against Angel or against Sword Art if he's just applying CC. Now Suning's pushing down the mid lane. G2 actually decreased the gold gap in this game with the last fight. But Sooning's still pushing up. TP coming through. Sword Art with the engage on the Mickey X. The damage comes out. Angel's going for the kill, but he won't be able to find it. Now engage from Wonder onto the back line. Juan Fung trying to disengage. SOFM barely going to be kept alive. Sword Art also walks away, but bins into the back line. Engaging 1v5 all alone. Slashing and dashing and crashing. Angel finds the kill into Wonder. Where's the Sonic Wave? Resonating Strike not going to be coming through just yet. SOFM not able to find the kill. One for one overall. Make it a two for one. It's another kill for Perks. He gets Sword Art. He gets SOFM together. And that means Sooning is running the hell away. And this could be Baron for G2, potentially. We'll see if they want to try to force it. The carries are still alive for Sooning, but it is a jungle advantage for G2. This is a team with the killer instinct, and I think they have got to go for something. You don't want to play slow against this Ocean Soul team, but we'll see if they can make it happen. Perks is running out mid lane right now. He is going to get the push, so G2 will not start it up. They are just looking to lay a trap and are now going over towards that Baron pit. And they're going to try to look for a pick here. They're hoping they can find someone from Sooning trying to check. Well, hey, there's Ben, who dashes himself back away. He's not going to die to this anytime soon. I like the fact that G2 went for it. That is something that if they got somebody that wasn't the Renekton, that didn't have a dash immediately away, that could have been a kill. But unfortunately for them, does not work out. Now G2 with control over the mid lane, trying to push this up. They have two turrets compared to four. They'd love to take down this mid lane tier one. Get that off the board. Use that to shore up the gold a little bit more. One and a half thousand gold separating the teams here. Baron is up. Elder is up in three minutes. And with that being the state of the game, I do want to address 
a change to the ebb and flow of the neutral game fight that Elder brings in, you're no longer in a low risk, low reward situation if you're G2. Yes, you have to deal with Ocean Soul, but now winning the Drake fight actually gives you this super powerful reward as well. If G2 can win a team fight around the Elder Drake and take the buff, all of a sudden, this game can swing just right back in the other direction. Yeah, I mean, it's no longer Ocean Soul versus 4% regen. <laughs> it's Dragon Lasers versus Dragon Lasers, and they're Fair up fight. for grabs. Fair fight. G2 now having to deal with the fact that Suning is starting up the Baron, and Suning want to be able to secure this one. Nice follow-up coming in from the Ash ulti. Mickey X loses about half HP. Suning still in the Baron. The Baron is dropping incredibly slowly. There's no way they can stick on this one the entire time. G2 has arrived. Wonder's ready to jump into the middle of everyone if need be, and Suning will walk away. And you see, Angel wasn't willing to actually commit the ultimate to try to kill off Mickey there. You know, wanted to just try to poke him out and save it for any sort of committed fight if it broke out afterwards. At this point in the game, uh, it's going to be long respawn timers if they go for it, and SOFM is just moving aggressively forward here. Knows so he can't really be taken down. And, and look at that regen when he gets his damage out with the Ocean Soul just kind of flying right back up. This Lee Sin, this is a Chad Lee Sin, if I ever seen one in my life. Land the Q, take the Q. And it's not even a, <laughs> my mind's telling me, you know, but my body's telling me yes type of thing. He doesn't even die Both for it. Both are telling him yes. It's three, two, and <laughs> ten. Mind and body are in sync. The man is just ready to go on this Lee, and I love watching it. Game's still dead even in terms of gold between these squads. 1,000 gold doesn't really mean anything. 35 mm -hmm. minutes into the game, it's the difference in wards at this point in time. Look at the itemization on Huan Feng. Has that QS? SS, three or two crit items completed, third one in the process. Over on the other side, you've got QSS also up on perks, who has been caught out a few times this game, five, four, and five on the KDA, so wants to make sure he's able to get away if he gets hit by the Enchanted Crystal Arrow or by a stun from Angel. Because honestly, if he sticks around for any amount of follow-up, he's just dead. Yep, but he hasn't had to fight yet with this QSS, so it is going to be harder to take him down. Uh, the one you might be worried about on the side of G2 is actually Caps now, because he still has no Zonias and he has no stopwatch. He's very squishy, but he's high damage. He has the rapid fire in to try to get those picks with the gold card, and he's also sitting on no flash. So, uh, you know, if he's in a bad spot, he could be in trouble. He's going to have to rely on some really good positioning. It's a higher risk, higher reward build, and that's the kind of playstyle we have come to expect from Caps. Bin gets spotted by the sweeper of Mickey X, so G2 is aware of where the Sooning top laner is hanging out. Blast Cone is up, could be used to go over the wall here for the Elder Drake fight. Remember G2, man, this is a fearless kind of squad. Even if Sooning has control over the pit, you know Yankos will be getting in there going for the 50-50 on that steal as the red buff is secured. SOFM has that one. Enchanted Crystal Arrow flies out. Perk's gonna use the QSS, getting himself away. Caps will not be hit by the dredge line, but SOFM is going in. SOFM is exhausted. Bard ulti finds its way onto Sword Art and Sword Art alone. SOFM still looking to find some more onto Caps. SOFM is alone. SOFM nearly going to be taken out. Has to get back to the safety of the team. Bin and the ulti now having to run away as well. Suning. They tried to go for it. They tried to look for some capture potential. Onto that pick on Caps. Flash coming in from Bin. Follow up dredge line won't find the mark. Suning may have overestimated their engage potential and now they're going to be eating some damage on the back end of the fight. The True Shot Barrage comes through. The McHales there was so big from Mickey. They knew there was no cleanse on, flat, on on caps, so Bin went for it. But Mickey was there with the McHales, saving his mid laner again. G2 Here playing it so well. For the kill and they found it. Angel has been destroyed. And Suning is in a 4v5. G2 is looking for more now. They're finding the gold card. It's on to SOFM. Sword Art's going in, looking to buy some time, looking to protect his valuable members of his team. Lee Sin has to disengage. Huan Feng running away now too. Suning losing their mid laner. Proper team play, protecting each other, kiting out the CC, disengaging when Suning tries to deal with them. Now they have to fight through this Elder Drake fight. They have it aggro. They're the ones tanking it. Suning still sticking around. They don't want to give this away for free, but they make the call to go in and fight 4v5. It looks like they do. Yes, they will. Mickey's in some trouble. Enchanted Crystal Arrow flies out. Suning going in for the fight. Wonder in the middle of four people. Two Shot Barrage coming through. Finds the kill into Huang Feng. Sword Art's taking all the damage down. Mystic Shot over the wall. Perks with the follow-up. Able to find the kill. SOFM still alive, but he's down to one third HP. He goes in. He's looking to steal the drink, but he will not be able to do it. Here's a losing hand, buddy. Yankos ends up grabbing the kill, facilitated by Caps, and G2 will take the Elder Drake. What a fight, Flowers! That was incredible! G2 and Suning going blow for blow there. 
the kiting, the team play from G2 to survive the early seconds of that fight was incredible. Everyone coming together to peel for caps. He had the cleanse, the exhaust, the Mikhail's coming through to save him. And this is the later re-engage. They've already killed off Angel. They wanted to try to finish this dragon before Angel respawned. So he couldn't just come straight back to the fight. But Huang Feng moving down here as they go for the re-engage overextends a little bit. And G2 were able to capitalize on it so heavily. SOFM going in, Huang Feng moving forward, but Ingo's Wonder stuns him up. He has the flash, but he could not get out of there. The ultimate from Perks coming straight over across Wang Feng, bursting him down. As soon as the Ash fell, there was no chance for Sooning in this fight. Ocean Soul be damned. G2 came to play. And now Sooning are the ones having to respect G2. G2 up 5,000 gold. Damage dealt in the last fight. 10, is that this broke? 10,000 damage. Wait, is that the whole game or is that the last fight? Because that is insane. That's the last fight because it says 312 for Angel. <laughs> Ain't no way he did 312 damage True, in the whole yes. game. True, yes. That is insane. Holy moly, man. Now, G2 with the Baron, with the Elder. This Red Bull Baron buff could be the end of the game right here. Su Ning must defend against a double Uber buff G2. Can they end the game right now? True Shot Barrage finds Angel, takes about one third of the health. First Nexus turret is gone. Ben is in the mid lane. Ben, you need to get Run back fast, to the Nexus. Little crocodile. You gotta get back over there, man. You gotta help your boys. Sooning are truly in a spot that could end this game for them right now. But the Elder Drake is such an X They're factor trying to wait here. It out. 30 more seconds. They've got to survive another half minute. They need to clear this wave away. G2 want to stop them. Enchanted Crystal Arrow fired off, looking for some damage. On to Yankos. Ben goes into the ultimate, keeping himself alive. G2's on the push. G2's looking to make the play. Wonder into the dive, looking to disable the turret, keeping things going. Wonder's going to be killed off. Wan Feng taking that one. Beautiful scatter the weekend. Send them running. SOFM goes in. He tries to dodge away a little bit more damage. Would trigger the Elder Dragon, but they won't be able to find it. The dredge line now Caps down to the back. Mix. Looking to find the kill. Caps into the back line. Trying to find the wild cards. Trying to find the damage. Caps is going to be barely escaping. The damage down onto the remaining players. Perks is out. Caps is throwing the cards around. Looking to finish off the Nexus turn. He won't be able to do it. And it's an ace for Sooning. Oh my God. This game is incredible, Flowers. Huh? Absolutely delivering the debut of both these teams at Worlds 2020. And we are in for a treat. They are on the push here. Can they actually end? They don't have a minion wave, so I don't think they can. Yankos could be up, but Caps' res timer is so long. Maybe they just try to straight up go for it because the full march is on. Yankos and Wonder oh will be back. God. Mickey will be back. But the question is, will they be able to hold without Caps and Perks? And is Suning even willing to go for it? Because they have lost these last couple fights. Maybe they want to go for it. Give me five games of this pop directly into my veins. This is Worlds. This is League of Legends. This is Suning. Looking to end the game. Nexus turret's being kept alive now by the Bard Ulti. Perks, Perks and Caps gonna be coming up here in just a moment. Suning going for the game ending push, going for the team fight, looking to find the damage. Wonders going into the ulti now, looking to mount the defense. Ben runs away. Wan Feng's gonna be taken low. Wonders the first one to die, and Yankos is nearly gonna be killed off now. Where's the focus gonna be? Players or Nexus? They hold! It is one for one. They're trying to kite themselves back. Wan Feng stays alive, using the QSS, keeping himself in a good spot. Caps coming in with the ulti. Gold card goes out. Wan Feng goes down. Sword Art Caps is TP. Caps is going in. He uses the ulti, getting himself in a good spot now as the TP comes through from G2. They're into the top lane of the base. It's Perks, baby! Knock, knock! Open the hell up! The Nexus is the target! Suning's advance is resisted! G2 has persisted! And Perks insisted on a win in this game! This is League of Legends, baby! What a game between G2 and Suning! That was incredible! That's Worlds! That's why we're here! Anybody ever asks you, what are you doing watching video games at 4 o'clock in the morning? Turn this on! Holy moly! Oh man, I sure hope.